afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. John Belkowitz here, and it's another Q&A Wednesday, and I think it's actually a Wednesday today. So we got a great question um, from one high voltage one. Ding! So the question is, thank you for the awesome question, how do we control autogenous shrinkage in concrete? So for those of you who don't know what it is, um, I wanted to define autogenous shrinkage in two sentences and hey listen one high voltage one I'm trying to truncate this into two sentences so if there's more collateral more detail that needs to go into this definition or anybody else out there please throw it in here but the definition that I've got um, is emptying the pores or self desiccation of um, the hydrated cement matrix inducing capillary stresses that overcome the um, or that have an external volume uh, phenomena on the binding matrix. Now, in some cases, those capillary stresses that are induced by the emptying out of the pores or self. Uh, or self-desiccation <laughs> can overcome the sheer and tensile capacity of the hydrated cement matrix and that mm, can induce cracking. Um, now the difference between this and drying shrinkage is normally drying shrinkage occurs when there's a, a reduction in moisture uh, you know externally from the concrete or of the, high, the binding matrix. With autogenous shrinkage um, there doesn't have to be this external evaporation or reduction in moisture. So the question was, ding! Uh, how do we control this autogenous shrinkage? Well, what they're talking about, um, especially that I, you know, I love that portion of the, the definition that goes into, and this definition is uh, from, oh, uh, was it Science Direct? Um, so, and whose paper was that? Uh, it's, it's a paper by Bao Lu Tung Chai Ling and it's on carbon dioxide sequestration on recycled aggregate and they give a beautiful definition of chemical and autogenous shrinkage. So we'll send you the link to that really nice paper. Really, really nice paper. So we'll send you the link on that. Um, but, you know, normally we see this, especially the self desiccation. Ding! Here's a wonderful picture of cement and this is an atypical. SEM image of cement that we took from a New Jersey based company that was using Whitney you remember that it was like three or four percent of a non chloride accelerator in the middle of summer right. when it was a hundred degrees out right. um, and they were getting wicked wicked amount of cracking with the temperatures with the heat they weren't so much getting evaporation just things were getting kicked off so quickly that they were consuming more water that was available in a localized area and in this picture, what you can see is it's almost puzzle pieces are pulling away or puzzle pieces that were too small to fit in the places that they needed to go. And you can actually, you can actually, you can see that these, whatever these particles are, these cement grains or hydrated components or phases are yanking away from what looks like the hydrated cement matrix, this calcium silicate hydrate that has developed. So it, it's such an atypical view, but this was a manifestation of you know autogenous shrinkage other places where we've seen this phenomena is we're using type 3 cements on very hot days type 3 cements with accelerators especially in the precast industry if we're making tiles pavers ADA pavers big pavers small pavers if they want to turn and burn those forms they change the chemistry so that it cooks up heats up and it makes that concrete stronger faster but that doesn't always lead to better, right? And there doesn't have to be this external moisture loss. So how do we control that? Well, we slow down those mechanisms. We put that water back in there. So if we do have those mechanisms that are kicking off, we make sure we have the design water to compensate for that loss in water that we're gonna see early on. So we don't hit that self-desiccation point. And I really do, I keep seeing self-desiccation do you remember the definition of self-desiccation, baby? It refers to the taking up of free water by hydration of Portland cement, Portland cement, excuse me, to such an extent that not enough is left over to cover the surface area 
surfaces of unhydrated particles or to maintain 100% relative humidity within the concrete. Holy moly, guacamole. What a great definition. This is from Concrete Construction. <gasps> if you don't know, Concrete Construction, the magazine was shut down. How long have they been open for, Haley? Does anybody know? Oh gosh, years and years. Concrete Construction. Ugh. And they still have their stuff online, so you can go check it out. That's, uh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay, so... Uh, the ways to control that, either adding that water in or using supplementary materials to hold that water in so you're getting that complete hydration, you're not burning through that water to reduce that relative humidity. And at a certain point, you are going to use up that water. And by including certain things that call or uh, create the environment for internal curing, whether that's lightweight aggregate or using colloidal silica-based products that create that internal curing mechanism, you can do things besides changing up the type of binder that you're using to keep that water in there so you have that 100% relative humidity uh, for that um, long term, longer term hydration to give you a concrete that is not only stronger but lasts longer. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for that awesome question, One High Voltage One. Go concrete! Yes, folks!